to darkness. Point their feet back to the Lord Christ. And then when our name was here, oh, grant us a home in that good land where the wicked will cease from trouble and the will will be at rest. It is the name of him who is our Lord and Christ and soon coming King that our name we pray.
my faith. Increase my faith. And you may have a similar prayer on today. For when we look out in our world and we see pandemics, when we see six million people impacted or testing positive for the coronavirus, when we see 180,000 people who have died from the coronavirus, when we see unemployment in this country, unemployment over the last four or five months, nearly 50 million people have provided or have, 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 have applied for All right. unemployment. Of that 50 million, about 20 million or so continuously apply for unemployment. Through sickness and death and disease and decay all around. We see children that are not in school. Where else is there for a child to be? But in school, learning the A's and B's. One, two, three. There is social unrest in many towns and cities. People are rioting, people are looting, some are protesting nonviolently. Some are mad that the protesters are protesting. Some are claiming that they have the right to be angry and disgusted, but you don't have the right. To be angry and disgusted. I'm going to keep going here. We have distortions of truth. At the highest levels of government. We don't know who to believe or what to believe. We have hurricanes and natural disasters. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm asking God, Lord, please increase my faith. There's a reason. There's a reason I want to talk just for a few moments about faith on right. today. The right. Bible says in Romans 10 and 17 that faith comes by hearing. Hear right. And hearing by the word of God. Right. Somebody has to hear the message of faith this morning. All right. That in light of everything that's going on in our world, in light of all the disaster, and, and, and in light of everything that's going where people are against one another, somebody has got to hear about faith. We are being bombarded on every hand with reasons not to have faith. But I declare to you this morning, that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Right. Right. We need to talk about faith just a little bit on today. Bible says in Romans 12 and 3 that God has given every man a, a measure of faith. Right. Right. That means that I got some faith. Yeah. And you got some faith. Yeah. And regardless of what our faith levels may be, every single one of us has some faith. So I want to talk a little bit about faith today. Here's the first point that I want you to remember about faith. And that is, faith does not have to be perfect. Your faith doesn't have to be perfect. When you are bombarded consistently and constantly with many of the things and more beyond those items that I've just detailed in this, it'll cause you to think twice about who's in charge and who can do what. Faith doesn't have to be perfect on today. And if you are watching us on today, you're probably thinking, well, thank you for saying that because I have been doubting some things. All right. I've been wondering about some things. Yes. I've been losing my hope, brother boy. My and I've been concerned about not only what I see on TV, but what I see in my own life. Mm -hmm. 
Because well, what we see in the broader world, we see right here in our own backyard. Right. There are people who have lost loved ones and people who've lost friends who've shaken their world. Yeah. They are wondering, is there a bomb in here? Faith, church, does not have to be perfect. I want to take you to Hebrews, to Matthew chapter 17. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With that passage of scripture, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. And there, Jesus transfigures himself. He glows as in white, as snow. New International Version says that all the rich in the world couldn't make him as white as he was on the Mount of Transfiguration. Had his inner circle there with him. And, and, and Peter, uh, who seems to be the spokesperson for the group, yeah. while they're on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah appears. Yeah. They're talking with Christ about his pending death. And Peter, from that experience, says, he says, it's good for us to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's build three tabernacles, he says. Yeah. Yeah. One for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, and, and suddenly a cloud appears. Yeah. Cloud appears and comes over the mountain and overshadows them, and the voice of God comes forth. Yes, sir. Says, uh, uh -huh. This is my beloved son, in yes, yeah. whom I am well pleased. Yeah. Hear ye him. And, and anytime you hear the voice of God, I would imagine that you're going to be pretty frightened. So they fall to the ground. Jesus picks them up and they made their way down the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Still talking about faith this morning. I'm just painting that scene for you to get to where I'm really trying to go. All right. All right. As they make their way down the mountain, they run into a multitude of people. That's right. There's one man. There's one man, to make a long story short, who comes to Jesus and he says, uh, Jesus, can you heal my son? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Says my son is uh, grievously vexed with uh, that one, yeah. and 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 I went to your disciples, Jesus, but they couldn't do anything. Yes, sir. And I'm wondering if you uh -huh. can do anything. Yeah. Mm. Jesus responds to the man. Jesus getting angry for a minute. <clears throat> he says, uh, uh, "How long uh -huh. must I deal with this unbelieving and perverse generation?" How much, how long shall I suffer to be here with you? And Jesus says to the man who has the son who's been thrown in the fire and the water ever since he was a kid, Jesus says to him, if you can believe, yes, sir. if you can believe that I can heal your son, yeah. Yeah. then it can be done. Uh -huh. All right. and, and this man who has no name, hmm. this man who is in the Bible who's not identified individually. Yeah. He says something profound about faith on today. All right. Talking about faith does not have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Man says to Jesus, he said, Lord, I, I, I believe. Yeah. 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 But help thou mm -hmm. my unbelief. Yes, right. sir. And that's something for us to remember today that all of us have a measure of faith, but our faith is not perfect. All right. yes. All right. And just because your faith is not perfect, it does not disqualify you from the blessings right. of our Lord and Savior, right. Jesus Christ. Yes, Peter, James, and John. Yes. Jesus. Faith does not have to be perfect. Yes. Peter, who was part of Jesus' inner circle, he walked with Jesus. He talked with Jesus. He saw the miracles that were done. Yeah. He even walked on the water. Yeah. He's the one who declared that Jesus was the Christ. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. son of the living God. Right. But Jesus told him. Jesus told him as Jesus was heading to his death. He said, Simon, Simon, behold. Yeah. Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you yeah. As we right. mm. but I pray for thee. Yeah. Yes, Lord. I pray that the faith mm -hmm. fail thee not. Yeah. Right. And when you are converted, 
it, Peter. You need to go and strengthen your brother. Right. Peter, who had seen all of these miraculous things that Jesus had done, when it came time for him to step to the plate and defend Jesus and to say that he was the Christ and that he was the one with Jesus, yeah. he's the one who denied him yeah. right. three times before yeah. the cock crowed thrice. Yeah. Faith does not have to be perfect. Right. Like Peter, like the man with the ill son, our faith sometimes is not perfect. But we are in a position to say, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Right. Talking about faith today. All right. Somebody's been struggling lately. Mm -hmm. Somebody's been struggling, waiting for God to do something miraculous. Right. Yeah. Another feature about faith that I want you to hear from me today is that faith is not based on proportion. All right. Faith is not based on proportion. Well, what do you mean by that, Brother Corey? Well, let me give you this example. In a, in a boxing match, the heavyweights and the featherweights are not the ones who square off. You don't put a heavyweight in the ring with a featherweight and vice versa. Each class, each division is in a class of its own. And, and, and in order to get in the ring, you have to weigh in at the proper class. Right. Mm -hmm. Talking about faith is not proportional. Well, faith doesn't have to appear or doesn't look the way the boxing ring looks. All right. So we have a good example in David and Goliath. Goliath, who's a so-called heavyweight, mm -hmm. and David, who is a featherweight. Right. David was a Rudy fellow. Yet full of faith in what God could do, and this featherweight slayed the lion, yeah. the heavyweight. Right. Faith is not based on proportion. I tell you, Bible tells us is that if one can chase a thousand of the enemy yeah. and two can put ten thousand yeah. into flight, then faith again yeah. is not based right. on right. proportion. Yeah. If faith was based on proportion. One would equal seven. Yeah. And if you multiply by seven, you get seven, 14, 20, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56. That's faith based on proportion. The Bible tells us that if one could put 1,000 to flight, right. and two could put 10,000 to yeah. flight, and I'll give you a little bit more math, three can put 100,000 to flight. <laughs> And four can put a million to five. Yeah, right. And five can put ten million to five. Right. And six can put a hundred million yeah, to five. Right. And seven can put right. a billion to five. Right. I'm here to tell you today that faith is not proportional. Right. Faith is not a proportional factor, but it's an exponential factor yeah. when you put it with supernatural power. Yeah. All right. All right. Faith is not proportional, but it's exponential. Mm -hmm. When you take faith and you add God to the equation, yes, right. yes. you can do some yes. amazing things. Yes. Oh, you're rich today. And if that's not enough, then we simply look at Jesus. Yes. Somebody may be looking, may be wondering, what is he talking about? <laughs> Throwing all of those numbers at us like that. No, we can't do math that fast. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and look at that video again to see how we calculated that. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that faith is not proportional. Yeah. That is exponential. Yeah. That when you take faith and you take supernatural power, all you need is a little bit of faith. Jesus tells us right there in that same passage of Scripture in Matthew 17, you can take it as word. He says, if you have faith right. as a grain of a side of a mustard seed, yeah, right. <laughs> you can say to this mountain, be thou removed. Right. Remove hence and over to yonder place. Yeah. 
natural power. Right. My Lord. I don't know about you today, but I'm one of those people that I need some mountains to move in my life today. Yes, sir. I know if I speak to that mountain, if I speak to that big thing that's standing in my way, I speak to that great challenge that I seem to can't be able to get around. I can speak to that thing in faith and Christ tells me. I can tell it to be removed and it shall be removed. Faith is not proportional. Faith is exponential. And faith does not have to be perfect. And somebody's been telling somebody, you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to believe this and you got to believe that and you don't do it this way or don't do it that way. Tell them to shut up. I got just a little bit of faith. Yes, yeah. sir. And a little bit of faith with supernatural power yes, sir. is enough to move great mountains. Yes, sir. I want to tell you one more thing about faith. Faith, faith has got to be exercised. Yes, sir. We are, we are, we are members of the faith community. Yes, sir. And yeah, we are men of faith and we are women of faith. Right. But faith without works is dead. Yeah, right. We've got to exercise our faith. Right. And we've got to exercise our faith in times of turbulence. Yeah. When times are difficult and times are hard. Yeah. We've got to know that faith alone is not going to do all the work. But faith without works is dead. Right. And good works right. are the response to true Yes. Now remember that. And that if we got real faith and true faith, then out of that faith, good works are going to follow. Amen. Not only are good works going to follow, but obedience to God yes. is also going to follow. You cannot obey God without faith. God is a, is a God, is a spirit that has never been seen. Right. But you've got to know when he's telling you and directing your footsteps. Right. James says, over in James chapter 2, he says, show me your faith without works. Yes, and I'll show you my faith with works. Oh, In the believer's life, faith has to be characterized mm -hmm. by works. My and so while we are experience, experiencing bombardments from every single level, we have to put our faith in to works. Yes, Lord. And I'm really done this morning. My Lord. I've given you what God has given me. Okay. That faith, the exercise of faith does not have to be perfect. All right. mm. Faith is not proportional, but it's exponential. But also, faith without works is dead. We have to exercise our faith. We have to use our faith in situations and moments that are drastic and that are too hard for us to understand. Right. Lord Jesus. Too hard for us to channel our way through. That's the time when we are to put our faith into action. I'm done. And I, and I, I pray for you today. Praise God. That Whoever you are and wherever you are, that you would be encouraged today. That you would use your faith to carry on and to go on just a little bit further. Amen. If you're struggling today, yes. you're uncertain today, you lost hope and you are looking in the wrong direction. My Lord. If you are about to give up and throw in the time. Yeah. All right. Today is a good day to exercise your faith. Right? And the good thing about faith is that you're not alone. You're not alone in your faith journey. The Bible tells us that there are many witnesses. Matter of fact, there's a cloud of witnesses, the Bible says, who've already demonstrated their faith in their life. And, and, and we could call the roll on those cloud of witnesses. We could call Abraham. Yeah. Abraham left his hometown yeah. to 
to go to a city that God was the was directing him to, where there was no foundation. That's the kind of faith that we're talking about. The kind of faith where Noah, what God told Noah, right. to build an ark yeah. with no rain in the sky, yeah. no clouds in the sky, tell it, tell it. no indication of impending doom. Noah built that ark. Because of the faith that yeah. he had. Yeah. We can fast forward from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Right. Paul, an example of faith. Yes, yeah. Didn't always believe in Christ. As a matter of fact, persecuted the church. Yeah. Who knows where you are today? I don't know. But God knocked him off his house. Yeah. And he is the most prolific writer of this Bible in the New Testament. Amen. Talking about examples of faith. Yeah. We can bring it on up to today. Yeah. We can talk about John Lewis yeah. on today. An example of faith. An example of courage. Wow. We can talk about Martin Luther King. Yeah. We can talk about the members of our church. Amen. Yeah. We can talk about mom. Yeah. We can talk about dad. Yeah. We can talk about those ones that we love that have gone on before us. Who are part, part of this great cloud of witness. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not alone. Yeah. You're not alone. Right. Yes, you. Not only do you have a cloud of witnesses, so I'm ministering today. You have the ultimate witness. And that being Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus Christ is faithful to the point of the cross. Yes. Glory to his name. If you think about your situation and you think about where Christ was, what we endure today is nothing compared mm -hmm. to what Christ had today. All right. And he's able to help you today. Yes, he is. If you will receive him into your heart, yes. wherever you are, you can call on him right yes. now. Yes. We open the doors of the church. Faith. The confidence in things that we hope for. The assurance of the things not seen. How is your faith? Come by letter. Yes. Candidate for baptism. Or Christian experience. Yes. We'd love to have you. We'd love to worship with you. Praise God. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to talk with you more about faith. Yes. We'd love to walk with you on your faith journey today. Thank the Lord for his goodness. Thank you. You can call us at 662-332-2489. Someone is here to receive your call. We'll give you a call then. You can reach us on our website. There you can send us an email. We promise to respond to you as you seek to make our Lord Jesus the head of your life. This time we would also make our appeal for them. Tithe and offering. We've attempted to make it easy for you. We have the Givelify app that you can download to your phone. You will see our church there. You see our pastor, first lady. You can make your contribution right through the Givelify app. And many of you have been so diligent and so faithful with your stewardship over your resources. You can also go to our church website at greaterhindsnbc.org. You can go to the giving tab where you can find our PayPal link there. But you can make your contribution as well. Yeah. It's been an honor, privilege to stand before you and to proclaim God's word. That faith still matters yeah. in the life of the believer. And you can cry out to God to increase my faith. At this time, we're going to ask our pastor to come with our prayer and benediction and our choir will close us out with this song. Amen.
powerful word of faith. We call the name of Sister Dorothy Morris, our first lady. Yes, yes. We lift Brother Milton Curtis and his family. Yes. Mother Emma Preston. Yes. We also call the name of Mother Olive Ann Taylor. Yes. And Mother Ruth Williams. Sister Bessie Johnson, the Department of Prayers. Brother Sister Hattie Johnson. Sister Annie Perkins, we lift her in prayer as well as yes. Sister Patricia Rose and Sister Patricia Scott. Yes. Yes. Sister Lori yes. Short, we lift yes. them in yes. prayer. And Sister Ruby Smith. Yes. We also lift our beloved niece, Sister Kim Tillman, Peoria, who's still yes. in coma. Yes. Uh, mother and uh, Sister uh, Amanda Wheeler. Yes. And Sister Elizabeth Young, I lift her in prayer as well. Sister Lawson, we lift her in prayer. Also, the family of uh, church members, uh, Brother Roderick Mitchell, Bishop yes. Roderick Mitchell of uh, Cleveland, our neighbor. Yes. That family, his wife uh, went on to be with the Lord this week. And uh, as well as others whose name that escapes us and uh, that we do not have, uh, we lift them in prayer this yes. morning. Yes. For we know that God is a healer. Yes. Yes. He can do all things. Oh, all yes. 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 Should we go to the Lord in prayer as we go down from this house of worship? Teach us, O oh God, as we come to walk by faith and not yes. by sight. Teach us, O oh God, as we walk before you to yes. see beyond our circumstances yes. and see victory. To look beyond sickness and see wellness. And yes, to see wholeness as we walk by faith. Yes. As we walk and we look by faith. To look beyond chaos yes. in our lives and see Woo. clarity. Yes. Yes. To look beyond the pandemic, oh God, yes. and see power that's in you. Or greater yes. he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yes. Or to look beyond our masks yes. and see the master. Yes. And when we're walking in the valley of the shadow of death, may we through faith can see the mountain top. Yes, yes. Teach us to walk by faith each day. Yes, sir. Oh, guide us now, oh God. Yes, we bless you, we love you, we magnify yes, your name. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Thank for your you. indwelling presence. Yes. For that is the power that we have yes. through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, yes. Now, May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Yes, Lord. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. Yes, Lord. And to be gracious unto thee. Yes. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. Oh, yes. And give thee peace. Yes, Lord. In him who is our Christ we pray. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.